Hi there. Uh, here's a short video looking at uh, one aspect of government failure in markets. And uh, this is called the law of unintended consequences. Now, any intervention in the market, it could be a minimum price, a tax, a subsidy, a regulation of some type, any intervention in the market designed to correct, for example, for one or more market failures, they can have effects that are largely unanticipated or unintended. Perhaps because the government or the agency hasn't fully tested or trialled a policy idea. Uh, keep in mind, of course, that economics is a social science. Human behaviour is unpredictable, it's uncertain. The choices that we make as both individuals and also within groups and networks can't always be predicted with accuracy. It's one of the really interesting aspects of looking at intervention and policies. Now, the rule of thumb is there's at least one unintended consequence of any intervention. It doesn't always have to be a negative unintended consequence. It could be, it could be positive. But it's worth bearing in mind this law if you're writing about government failure. Here's just a few examples. Uh, QE, quantitative easing, was, is a major macroeconomic policy now, of course, in many countries, including the UK, European Central Bank, and the US Fed Reserve. Some people are saying that actually QE has had unintended effects in, in different micro-industries. For example, if QE leads to a big fall, a substantial fall in long-term interest rates by increasing the supply of money in the economy, that could fuel a big rise in investment in things like shale, oil and gas exploration and, 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 and drilling and fracking. Uh, and so in fact, you can make a case for saying that actually the industry is over-invested in, uh, in shale, oil and gas, partly because QE has dr driven down the long-term interest rate. And now that the world price of oil has more than halved, from $100 a barrel to less than 50 actually the whole future of shale, oil and gas in the, in the United States, for example, is under threat. And you can argue it's partly the result of quantitative easing and monetary policy. In the UK, the minimum wage has gone up to £7.20 per hour. George Osborne has rebranded the minimum wage, a new national living wage. Uh, well, that's another issue. We've got a separate topic video on minimum wages. But, but one of the unintended consequences we're starting to see in the newspapers. Most days we see um, uh, restaurant chains like Eat and Zizi and coffee, sh coffee chains like Cafe Nero starting to try and offset the new minimum wage by, for example, cutting back on some staff freebies like a, a free sandwich in the morning or a free lunch. That's an unintended consequence, which uh, I suppose you could argue is pretty much inevitable, uh, but wasn't really thought through when they raised them in a way to £7.20. A few years ago, eventually, a smoking ban in public places came into place in, in England. Uh, I think the Scots and the Welsh got there first. A very credible policy, in my opinion. It's a significant health policy. One of the unintended consequences that suddenly we saw thousands of patio heaters appearing outside restaurants and pubs. For, to keep people who wanted a, a, a crafty cigarette warm in the outdoors. Well, I suppose you could argue this is a, you know, a, a rather silly unintended consequence in the sense that it's a waste of energy to have patio heaters outdoors for smokers, I suppose. Uh, it's not necessarily a hugely significant unintended consequence, but you could argue it's a, it's a pretty wasteful response. A uh, big one is the idea of a tariff on steel. So say, for example, the United States or another country puts an import tariff on steel designed to help their steel industry. Of course, one of the unintended consequences could be that car makers who import steel or steel-related products or the construction industry who import steel, they then suffer because of higher costs. The water waterbed effect is quite interesting. If you press... Uh, one part of a waterbed, you get a rise somewhere else. And uh, the example here is the idea of text um, price capping. So the European Union has gradually reduced the cap on text calls, trying to limit the cost of texting, uh, particularly when people are travelling within the European Union. And there's all sorts of good reasons for having a price cap on text, uh, but one consequence, one largely unintended consequence, is that mobile companies are trying to find other ways of raising revenue. Maybe they charge a higher price for their mobile handsets, or maybe they get more revenue by increasing the length of contracts, the minimum contract length. And another really good example, I think, of the law of unintended consequences is when you set very rigorous, hard, inflexible targets for treating the quantity of patients. So say, for example, you have to meet uh, the tough targets for seeing people within four hours in, in A&E in, in a hospital or getting people through 
surgery and immediate post-operative recovery in hospitals and getting people out again. So setting those kind of healthcare quantity targets seems like a good idea in principle, but as we've seen in various cases across the UK, particularly the, 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 the awful um, case at Midstaff's Hospital, if you want to Google that, perhaps setting targets for the quantity of care ultimately leads to a decline in the quality of care, particularly if there's managerial failings. I hope you're getting the idea here that an intervention can be well-intentioned, but actually there's always at least one kind of unintended side effect which can, can, can query the, the evaluation of the consequences. A couple more to finish with. The Economist just a few weeks ago was uh, making the case that actually banning second homes, one or two local councils and local authorities are thinking of banning second homes. I think Cornwall, St Ives are looking at doing this in, a, in an attempt actually to make housing more affordable for local people. Perfectly well-intentioned intervention. Here's what The Economist said. Those tempted to mend the market, for example, a ban on second homes, should beware unintended consequences. I think through the, uh, the, the reasoning here, restricting the option to sell newly built properties as second homes will depress their price. Discouraging new housing development, including the new affordable homes that builders are often required to put up. The spillover effects on the rest of the housing market could be nasty. In other words, if you ban second homes, you end up with less house building full stop, a proportion of which would have been affordable homes anyway, so you could make the, the scarcity issue even worse. I think that's quite a good example of unintended consequences. And, I, and I'll finish with this one. I hope you like this one. This is, I think, a classic case. A lot of corporations, a lot of schools, organisations, they are worried about security of networks and things. Um, passwords getting into the wrong hands, carelessness. So they sometimes they insist on people, or they actually give it out, <laughs> they give it out. They insist on people having a, a, a really complex password, a mixed case of letters, special characters, at least one number. Um, now, in theory, those kind of passwords are more secure, undoubtedly. But because people can't remember them, what tends to happen, this is natural human behaviour, they tend to write them down or copy and paste into some file on a computer somewhere, uh, and both of which actually are much less secure than letting them pick a password he or she can remember. This is taken from Quora. And as a result, of course, people leave complex passwords around which can be found and used. I think this is a really good example of an unintended consequence. Insisting on very complex passwords actually makes password protection potentially less secure. The law of unintended consequences. If governments intervene, there's always at least one unintended side effect which we might want to throw into the discussion. Thanks for joining me on this one.